Sisters in Leather. What a great title. It is a little misleading, though. There are no sisters in this movie of any kind. Instead, what we have is a biker gang of lesbians in leather. Which, Leather Lesbians would have also been a great title. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Sisters in Leather from 1969. This is a late entry sexploitation film. In 1969, that was the same year that Andy Warhol's Blue movie came out, and that movie ushered in the golden age of porn, which put a lot of sexploiteers out of business. So, let's see what the sexploitation folks were up to before they were unemployed. We open on a guy talking to a girl in a convertible. And there's music, but there's no dialogue or sound effects, so I guess here at the beginning at least, we've got a Moss film. That's fine, really, I didn't watch this because I wanted to hear them talk. This couple parks and... Don't I appeal to you? Oh, okay, so I guess we will have voices in this movie. As this couple is being amorous, they are interrupted by a leather-clad biker. She tells the man that the girl he's with is underage and they have a picture of them together. If he wants that picture, it'll cost him $2,000. Otherwise, they're sure his wife would like to see it. And $2,000 in 1969, that was a lot of money. According to one inflation calculator I looked at, that's like $15,000 in today's money. <laughs> that's a really expensive date. Oh, it turns out that girl is part of the gang. Man, that's a pretty nice racket they've got running. She hops on a bike and they ride off into the opening credits. Produced by Zoltan, wasn't he that magical fortune teller that made Tom Hanks big? Oh, <laughs> I know that was Zoltar. Yeah, okay, whatever. Anyway, our guy makes it home to his wife Mary and she is in a romantic mood. Uh, that's Kathy Williams, by the way. We last saw her on this channel in The Babysitter. The next day, our guy empties his bank account and meets up with the girl who set him up. He gives her the money and she assures him that this time no one's around, so why not make the punishment fit the crime? <laughs> and he believes her. Our guy's not too bright. Oh, but the girl was telling the truth. She is kind of into him. Unfortunately, one of her leather sisters doesn't like her being into men. Once he gets back out on the road, our guy spots some bikers wearing the same logo as the lesbians in leather. So he follows them into a pool hall. And this pool hall has table dancing, which kind of makes it the best pool hall ever. And dancing on that table is the gorgeous Pat Barrington in an uncredited role, which absolutely makes this the best pool hall ever. We last saw her on this channel in Agony of Love, and she's also one of the dancers in Russ Meyer's Mondo Topless, in case you're wondering what kind of figure was hiding under my YouTube-friendly version of this scene. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, trust me. Anyway, our guy talks to one of the bikers and explains to him that he has seen their logo on someone else's jackets, and these other people are running a kind of racket, squeezing husbands for money. The biker says that has nothing to do with them, but they'll look into it. Mm-hmm, -hmm, the plot thickens. Meanwhile, the Leather Sisters take our guy's wife out for a picnic and give him that picture. She handles the infidelity pretty well, actually, but that shouldn't be surprising. Nobody is watching movies like this for drama. Kind of not the point, you know? So, our Leather Sisters, including their guest Mary, uh, they get naked, and they put tanning oil on each other, and they take some nude Polaroids, and they ride around in the desert on motorcycles. So, yeah, this is the best picnic ever. And hey, doesn't she look like Sherry Moon Zombie? During all of this, the leader likes to keep her hat on, and I get it, that's a pretty damn cool hat. And some really nice glasses. And some really nice... Okay, so the girls, including our guy's wife Mary, they all pair off and start falling into lesbians with each other. But Mary changes her mind partway through an oil massage and they take her home. She leaves our guy a Dear John letter and moves in with the Leather Sisters. Just temporarily, you know, until she finds a place of her own. When Mary turns in for the night, the Leather Sisters pop a bottle of champagne and do all kinds of things that I can't show you. It's bubbly, it's wet, it's probably sticky, but that's just me speaking from experience, nothing that we see on the screen. 
A guy finds out where Mary is staying and then he goes and tells those bikers where that biker gang is that's using their symbol. Will the bikers help him get his wife back or will Mary succumb to the leather sister ways? Well, that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, you have to keep in mind what this movie is. This is a pure sexploitation film, which means its only real purpose is to put nudity on the screen. And I know reviewers, and I am guilty of this myself, like to talk up these movies a bit and make them seem more artistic than they really were, but really what most of them were were just paper-thin excuses to put lots of nudity on the screen. And in this regard, this movie is a huge success because the nudity on the screen is smoking hot. And there's a lot of it. A lot, a lot. Pat Barrington is, of course, my favorite. She is just gorgeous. But everyone here is gorgeous. And the scenes are great. The suntan oil and the table dancing and the nude photo shoot and the champagne play. All great stuff. And it's beautifully shot. Great angles, great close-ups, amazing work. And if that's all you're looking for, beautiful people in beautiful black and white photography, it's hard to do much better than this movie. But if you want more out of the movie, then like an unfaithful husband falling into a leather sister's trap, it has some shortcomings. Well, I don't want to spoil what little plot there is in this movie, but I will say that it didn't play out in a way I found to be totally satisfying. I thought there was going to be more to it. There was a little bit of mystery here, but it wasn't completely satisfying. And finally, and this isn't my complaint, but it is a complaint that some of you might have, this movie is very un-PC. There is a reason for this. These movies were walking a thin legal line back then, and one way they could be on the right side of censors was to reflect mainstream morality. Plenty of sexploitation films of this era have a moralistic ending. And since the mainstream morals of the 1960s were quite different from the mainstream morals of the 2020s, this can rub people the wrong way. So if you go into this movie from the 1960s wanting it to reflect values of the 2020s, you are going to be disappointed. But really, that disappointment's on you. I mean, if you're the kind of person who expects media from the past to reflect morals of today, you might be retarded. <laughs>